Welcome everybody, my friends, my home kitties, my home kit homies, my smart home aficionados out there. It is Andrew here and you are listening to another episode of Home Kit Insider or perhaps you're watching it if you've ventured over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash homekitinsider. Uh, but regardless, you have just me this week uh, covering all of the home kit news that you need to care about. I'm sorry if the banter is not going to be quite as good because I, I, I can argue with myself, but I hate losing and it becomes a whole thing. So we'll just, I'm just going to try to keep you all as entertained as possible. And we do have quite a show to go through today together. Uh, we have a lot of news and we have some user follow-ups, some new products to talk about. I'm excited. So let's go ahead and start the episode as we always do with some five-star review shout outs. This one is from Robert who is writing in from North Carolina. And Robert has been listening to the show since the very beginning, which I think is is incredible here. Like, talk about commitment to the show. Uh, Home Kit Insider, we've been, we've been doing episodes, this is 128, more than, uh, more than two years now of Home Kit Insider, which is amazing. Uh, audience has grown. You all out there have been fantastic. If you want to leave a five-star review, of course, we will give you a shout-out at the beginning of the next episode. So... Let's get into the news for the week. We have actually a couple follow-ups from previous stories that we've covered here. Uh, the first being Level Lock. Yeah, Level Lock. There, there's two different things that I want to mention. So the, the first is like a secret hidden feature that nobody even knew about. And that is that the Level Lock actually, and I'm talking about all Level Locks, the Level Bolt, the original Level Lock, uh, and the new Level Lock Plus, they all have a secret thread radios built into them. So when we reviewed any of the previous level locks, the whole thing was they were Bluetooth. So because they were Bluetooth, they would not support matter. And with this, they're going to enable a hidden thread radio and deliver support for matter via a firmware update. Now there is no timing on this update yet, but this is huge. I mean, you're, we're getting um, matter support, which is really nice for anyone who is focusing on matter and going all that route. But just for HomeKit users, we're getting thread support. And I think that is a huge deal because I constantly have people writing in who are asking about smart locks. We have another smart lock question from someone uh, later in this episode, but I have a lot of people writing in asking which smart locks to buy and if there's any thread enabled smart locks and there's really not many, especially in the home kit space. So by doing this, you're getting thread in an existing product, which is fantastic. And the reason people need thread in a smart lock is because Bluetooth isn't always great. If you have this on a back door or your front door is like far away from your living room or a home hub, anything like that, you may not have remote connectivity of that lock, which is a big problem. Now there's ways to get around that. Uh, some locks use Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi can just churn through batteries when on HomeKit, and you basically don't have those. Uh, like August, they actually have a Wi-Fi version, but it works on HomeKit only via Bluetooth, and you have to use the August app if you want to use Wi-Fi. HomeKit is just very taxing on uh, power because it has a lot of check-ins, frequent check-ins to check the status of the accessories and it just does not work well on battery and Wi-Fi. So uh, same thing with cameras, we see that a lot too. So yeah, by adding thread here, you're gonna be able to get that connectivity, you'll be able to have a border router or any other lighting products, anything that has thread that is nearby, bridge that gap and allow you to have connectivity to your lock. Plus we get matter support. So th this is amazing, I I'm thrilled to see this here, I'm very excited about it. The second part of our level news is there's actually a follow-up to the previous story, which is that the lock picking lawyer, this guru on YouTube that can just pick basically any lock in a matter of seconds, uh, picked the level lock very easily, less than five seconds. And I went on a bit of a tirade last week because I was getting sick and tired of these very rude emails and comments on, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Apple Insider, uh, to my email, all just saying like, you need to remove this review, this lock is not safe, nobody should buy it, and all this stuff. And a lot of them were coming from like Android users, because this was being almost pitched as like a lock that Apple had made, even though it's coming from Level, it was co-developed by Apple, and it, it was getting out of hand. But Level has now 
uh, come out with a response talking about this and says for compatibility level, use a typical type C lock cylinder from a major industry supplier and is commonly available in hundreds of lock brands on the market. Uh, that's what they told us here at Apple Insider. It's no secret that any consumer grade lock cylinder can be readily picked by those with some expertise and tools. The only way to limit vulnerabilities around the keyway is to remove it entirely. That is an idea we continue to consider closely through the that though the vast majority of customers prefer the comfort of keys that they've been using for decades. This is what Steven and I had talked about in a previous episode. Deadbolts can be picked. That is not a shocker. It's very expected. And the level lock, level lock plus, any of those are, are no different than almost any other typical deadbolt out there. Anything that you buy down the aisle of Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart the majority, the top rated ones, all on Amazon, all can be picked just as easily, and it is not some deficiency with the level lock. It's just a typical cylinder deadbolt, and I would not be surprised if a, a future version of the level lock has an option to be keyless, replace that cylinder with, with just no keyhole, and not worry about it for those who are comfortable going entirely, you know, digital and not having a key to get in. But it does raise the question of like, okay, if there's no keyhole, how would you get in? If the battery was dead, you know, you, you go out of town for some time, you come back, how do you get into your house without that? So that's something that Level has to figure out. But uh, in the meantime, they basically confirmed what we had talked about in last week's episode. Moving on from Level, we have a couple things for Hue users. So Signify is out with its latest lighting product ahead of the holidays, and it's pretty interesting. So these are called the Festavia String Lights. Festavia String Lights that work with the Hue Bridge and therefore HomeKit. Also, they would support Matter in that case. These will include 250 mini LED smart lights on a 20 meter cord, over 65 feet, if you, uh, Need me to do the conversion there. Um, but yeah, you can dim and brighten the lights, change the color, turn on and off, set timer schedules, all of that. And they can even be synced to music using the Hue app. That's a feature there. Um, there is a gradient effect. So if you added multiple colors to the string length, they can you know change going down your tree. Lots of different options here for the new Festavia, Festavia, uh, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, but string lights, these are gonna be great for Christmas trees, holiday lighting, anything like that. Pretty nice. So these are going to be priced at uh, $159, available on November 15th. And I want to kind of compare these to an existing string light that we've talked about, we reviewed last year on the show, that I kind of prefer. So if you're looking for string lights for your Christmas tree, unless you're all in on Hue and, and you want, you know, the for sure matter support and stuff like that, there's another option out there, which is called Twinkly. So the Twinkly Strings Multicolor Edition you have four different options for LEDs. So you can get 100 LEDs, 250 LEDs, 400 LEDs, or 600 LEDs. So you can get you know different lengths and different amounts of lights on the strings from Twinkly. And you even have a wire color option. You can go with black or green. So it can you know help you blend these in to your aesthetic, your Christmas tree, whatever it is. Uh, but they're a little bit more affordable. So these for the same 250 LEDs as the Hue, uh, standard green cord, those are going to run you $125. So uh, 35 bucks or so less than what the Hue lights are. And the twinkly ones are actually Wi-Fi connected. You don't need any bridge or anything like that to work with them. And of course they work natively with HomeKit. So I use the twinkly lights actually outside. I've got some on like my bushes and we, we change them for the holidays, turn them orange, you know, around, around uh, Thanksgiving and Halloween and stuff like that. We'll change them to, um, you know, Christmas colors as we get into December here, but I really like them. So for the tree, these are a really nice option to have. So, uh, Hue lights. Now a competitor with Twinkly on these things, but really cool to see those. And Hue does have a lot of neat lighting effects. Twinkly has neat effects too. Like it looks like it's like snowing down your tree. Cool stuff they can do with like AR, like mapping your tree out. Uh, if you haven't tried Twinkly, uh, they're pretty cool. But both of these are fairly expensive compared to your typical like $10 string lights that you're gonna toss on your uh, holiday trees. But it is an option. 
Then Hue also has a, a little minor thing with its update to Matter. So it already is certified. The, the Hue bridge is certified to work with Matter and we're waiting for the software update to arrive, which is likely coming in early 2023. I believe is when it's kind of scheduled, though there's not a, a promised date as of yet. But with that update comes a really handy little feature. And this is gonna be great for just, for specifically like HomeKit users. With this Matter update, any non-Hue bulb that is paired with the Hue bridge will work with HomeKit. So say you got the IKEA bulbs, you pair it with the Hue bridge, which was previously possible, but when you wanted to get those into HomeKit, you had to use HomeBridge. Uh, the Philips Hue bridge would only allow native Hue products to show inside of HomeKit, but with this Matter certification, since the hub is being certified and not the individual lights, anything that's connected to that hub will work with Matter and therefore show in the Home app. So this is gonna be really nice if you have IKEA bulbs or any of the other bulbs that can pair with the Hue bridge because they're all gonna work natively inside of HomeKit now. So that's gonna be a really nice update when that arrives later next year. By the way, speaking of next year, we actually have a couple uh, little pieces of information on iOS 16.2, which is currently in testing. With iOS 16.2, as we've talked about in previous episodes, it has that revamped HomeKit architecture, makes things faster, stuff like that. Apple is now at two betas deep in iOS 16.2, and rumors had pointed that it would actually be coming out in like December or something like that, but now it appears to be coming out in November because Apple released some PR saying that emergency SOS via satellite, a new feature for the iPhone 14 series, would be launching in November. So it sounds like 16.2 could be coming out sooner than we hoped, which is, which is great. So we'll get this new SOS via satellite. Apple could also just release a, a different update like iOS 16.1.2, something minor like that because 16.1.1 is out and it could bring emergency SOS via satellite that way but it seems like a big enough feature to be in a point update so I think we could see emergency SOS via satellite along with the new HomeKit architecture and uh, the other big changes you know coming out here in November. Um, I guess that's not really next year I don't know why that was my my connecting thread between those pieces but I remembered it and I thought I should mention it for all of you out there. One last piece of news coming out of Nanoleaf, the Canadian company, Canadian smart lighting company. If you remember the light bars that we covered on the show a while back and they came out with like the black skins for them, they now have a new version. These are the lines squared, lines squared. And basically they're still the standard like light bars they had before, the standard lines, but now they have a right angle connector that you can use on the end. So this right angle connector allows you to go at 90 degrees. The previous ones I think was like at a 60 degree angle. Um, but yeah, it opens up a lot more possibilities. You know, frame a doorway, uh, just create a bunch of different lighting effects. And you can combine the 60 degree adapters with the square, the right angle, 90 degree adapters and create even more effects that way. So lots of different options here. These will act as thread border routers, by the way, for HomeKit users, one of the, pretty much the only ones out there other than uh, Apple's HomePod Mini and Apple TV for actual HomeKit stuff. There is no word on if these will be supporting Matter. Nanoleaf has, of course, come out with their new Essentials line that will support Matter, but has not said anything about its existing products. These do support Thread, so they easily could work with Matter. They support Wi-Fi, so again, all Matter, typical Matter hardware, but Nanoleaf has not confirmed what will or won't be supporting Matter, but they did promise new news at CES 2023, which I will be at and uh, bring you as soon as I know it. Uh, lines Squared. It's available to pre-order now. They come in a smarter kit, which is a four pack of the line. So four of the little light bars for a hundred bucks here in the US. You can get a three pack of extensions um, or expansion pack, uh, which includes three additional light bars for $70. Before getting into some product reviews, I've got the new Apple TV 4K. We have the new Belkin MagSafe adapter that I wanna talk about. I have to thank our first sponsor for this episode of HomeKit Insider, and that is Masterclass. And I am sorry if I do not do as well of a job as Steven does in these ad reads, but come on, bear with me, and I am legitimately excited about Masterclass. I've been using them for a while now, and they are so 
great. So with Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to cook from, from Gordon Ramsay, improve your storytelling skills from LeVar Burton, or learn magic from Penn and Teller. There's over 180 classes from a range of world-class instructors. That thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. As I mentioned, I've been using Masterclass for a little while now, and I've been taking so many classes. It's just so much information that I want to just dive right into. I have been taking the Gordon Ramsay class, which has been fascinating, and it highlights another great feature of Masterclass, which is that you can actually get these printed PDFs or downloadable PDFs of the information that you're kind of going along with in certain classes. So with a cooking class, you get this amazing PDF of the, the meals that you are making that's like a high-end cookbook. It, it's very, very cool. Another amazing feature is that if you don't have time to sit there and watch them, you can listen to them. You have an audio version that is great while you're in the car. You turn it into a podcast. You like podcasts, you're listening to one now. You can just learn on the go, pop in your AirPods or get in the car and listen to your classes and then follow along and then later you can jump on the video and move between whatever it is that you need to do. I've also just started recently because I think it's fascinating, um, Marquez Brownlee, he has a class on here, MKBHD, on video stuff. It's just fascinating. This is all amazing and I can't believe all of this is in one place. It's so so good. And they have some really great stuff for you guys today. So I highly recommend you check it out. This holiday, you can give one annual membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash home kit today. That's masterclass.com slash home kit. Terms apply. So the first product that we're going to kind of review today is this. This is just announced. It's up for pre-order. Uh, I believe you can get it in your hands by the time that this episode is going live. But it's the Belkin Boost Charge Pro Wireless Car Charger with MagSafe. They have the best names for these things, don't they? Um, but basically, this is a car charger that actually works with MagSafe. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, I already have a MagSafe car charger. You don't. You have a Qi charger that has magnets around it. And by that, you're getting about half the speed of MagSafe. So MagSafe is capable of up to 15 watts of power, while as a Qi charger with magnets is only capable of 7.5. And despite the fact that it's been more than two years since MagSafe was actually announced, there has been no, zero, MagSafe car chargers on the market. None. Uh, Belkin is out with the very first one carrying the full Apple MFI seal of approval, which is just very, very interesting. So this thing will cost you a hundred bucks, which is not cheap by any means. Um, and with it, you get the little USB-C car adapter, little plug, I'm trying to show here on video, a very small little power adapter, and it is USB-C because there's a USB-C connector on the charger itself. The charger has an oval face to it, which is interesting because MagSafe has typically been, uh, it looks like one of two things. It's a perfectly round puck or it has like a rounded rectangle similar to the shape of the battery pack. So Belkin's first MagSafe product that came out was the standard boost charge vent mount. It just didn't charge and he used Apple's official MagSafe, but it's that rounded rectangle. So this has an updated design and it seems Apple is easing up on its MagSafe restrictions because we're seeing things like the new Anchor one that launched um, as a multi-charger on Apple's website has a covered up MagSafe puck and I've been told from a few different manufacturers that Apple's now allowing people to kind of cover and, and hide and obfuscate the MagSafe charger in different ways. So it's gonna be interesting to see what MagSafe stuff comes out. Um, but yeah, so we have the MagSafe puck there on the front, like a silicone soft touch surface and it holds really well. I have not had any problems with this holding my phone in the car and I've tested all the way up to like a 14 Pro Max with a case on, without a case on. It has not moved. No matter the, the biggest pothole or train tracks that I run over, it, it has not jostled free. It is a vent mount. So there is the vent clip there in the back that's gonna clip onto your standard car vents. I know some people don't love the, the car vent thing and I get it. Uh, some people just don't like where they are or they slide off or you have vents that aren't compatible because you have vertical slats. Now this does rotate so you can put it on there and if there's a crossbar in there, it can still hold it. You might just have to experiment kind of for yourself. Uh, it has an articulating neck behind it, so you can adjust the degree of where this is facing, so you can really make sure it's facing the correct way for you in the car. 
just tilt it around, all of that stuff. One interesting move is that the USB-C cable is actually connected permanently to the charger, so you can't swap it out for a different MagSafe cable. Or not MagSafe, but a, a USB-C cable. So it's built in, it is USB-C, and they do have a cable tie integrated into the rope or the, the cable itself, which is handy because then you can kind of make sure it doesn't get too much in the way and it keeps your car somewhat organized. And a USB-C connector on the end. So I did use a power meter in measuring the power on this thing, and I was regularly getting about 14 or so watts of power when charging with this, which is near the maximum promise of 15 watts, and far above most of the other uh, MagSafe chargers, you know, quote unquote, that are really just Qi chargers. They're, they're limited at 7.5, but they often get a lot slower as soon as there's any heat going on on your phone. That does raise one of the issues with a vent mount though, especially as we head into winter. You're likely gonna be pumping out hot air through those car vents, which could put additional heat on your phone. When you're running wireless CarPlay and navigating and you have heat blowing on the back and it's charging at the same time, your phone can easily you know, overheat. Now, I haven't, I haven't gotten my phone to overheat yet, uh, but it's definitely gonna depend on the situation. Is your phone in the sun? What are you doing? Uh, all of that kind of stuff, but that would make me concerned with the vent mount. Belkin does say, um, when I reach out to them with this concern, to just close that vent while you are charging, and they had even looked at active cooling, but found that it just seemed to exasper exasperate the issue sometimes. Um, because they would be end up like pushing warm air into the back of the phone and, and make things hotter. So I think it makes sense the way that they've done it, but it is interesting they went with a vent mount here. But the good news is with this product being out, with Apple kind of officially signing off on a MagSafe charger, we could get more MagSafe car chargers very soon. But I'm excited about this regardless. If you want to pick it up, it is available directly through Apple. Link in show notes, uh, yeah, it'll run you $100. The second product that I wanted to touch on just a little bit, not a lot not a lot here, but um, the new Apple TV. New Apple TV 4K is out. It's got the updated processor, USB-C Siri remote. It's got HDR 10 plus support on TVs that support it. Other than that, it's the same Apple TV that you've had in the past. Uh, I haven't really noticed much speediness in, in actually using the devices. I've just been kind of bouncing around and maybe apps load a little quicker, but not a ton. Like don't buy this for the speed improvement unless you're really into uh, mobile gaming or anything like that. I think it's just, it's a nice to have, but not a big deal. So HDR 10 plus though, it does look great on my Samsung TV. I had recently reviewed a Samsung TV, so I had one on hand. Uh, that looked amazing and it did work well with the updated Apple TV. So when I go into settings, I was able to enable HDR plus, it, it was able to see everything correctly and turn on. Some people had reported not being able to do this. And I think it just depends making sure your TV is supported. So for the couple people that had written in saying they didn't have this option, make sure your TV supports it. Uh, it's really big on the Samsung sets. Otherwise you're looking at just standard HDR, HDR 10, Dolby Vision, all of those. HDR 10 plus is maybe newer TVs, higher end TVs, Samsung TVs. That's where this is really going to be shining most often. The thing that I had an issue with though is the remote doesn't seem to, I've had like issues with connectivity and the remote. Like it'll sometimes just not wake the Apple TV and then I'll have to charge it. And it makes me keep thinking like, I wish I was there was a way to see like the charge level on an Apple TV remote, but I kind of just stuck it on there and it, sometimes it just doesn't wake the Apple TV and sometimes it does but I, I am on beta firmware on these TVs, so I'm, I'm not going to, to kick it right now, but we'll see if this continues to be a thing once 16.2, TVS 16.2 is fully released. But overall, very solid update to the Apple TV. We've got lower price tags. I wish Thread was built into both versions. It's kind of, it doesn't seem like it's that expensive or a high end of a feature to push people towards the upper one. I think that should have been included in the lower configuration as well. Maybe just keep the storage and the ethernet as the differentiating factors on the high end unit. I don't think people understand as much about Thread. Of course, all of you guys do because you guys are very smart and you listen or watch HomeKit Insider and you, and you know all about Thread. But for everyone else, they may not know, oh, I don't care about Thread. And, and then they get like the lower end unit and they want it later or don't even realize that they would benefit from having it. 
with any kind of different smart home stuff. So I think that should have been in the basic model, but overall, it's been a very good update to the Apple TV, and I'm pretty happy that Apple announced it. Before we get into listener questions and follow-ups, let's talk about a second sponsor for this video. You know them, you love them. It is Nebbia. So yes, thank you to Nebbia for sponsoring this episode. If you are not familiar somehow, this is your first episode listening to HomeKit Insider, Nebbia is an amazing company. They were backed by some of the highest end people out in Silicon Valley, including Apple's own Tim Cook when he experienced these things for the first time. I use the Nebbia by Moen Spa Shower, which uses actually 45% less water, and yet it's 81% more powerful than the competition. It is dead simple to install. I just removed my old shower head with a wrench, connected the little adapter, pop the new shower head on, boom, done. It is like showering in a spa. Like it atomizes the water and you end up with just warm air, warm water. The walls in the shower get warm. Like just everything is warm and it is so cozy and comfortable and it is an amazing literal spa-like experience in this shower. Plus it has the wand that just magnetically attaches to the wand. You can use it at a wall. You can use it at the same time. It's amazing. It comes in several different finishes. They also have other products, including the Quattro, which I know is the one that Steven has, has even more power going behind it. But they also offer a bunch of other awesome sustainable bathroom accessories. There is the shower shelves. There are shower curtains, hooks. Um, there's more. Steven loves that quick dry earth mat. It's made from diatomaceous earth, and it's not like a fabric that gets wet and soaks up water and kind of smells over time. It's like rigid, and you just put it down in there, and it just soaks everything up and dries nearly instantly. It's magical. It's amazing. It's the coolest bath mat I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, Nebby by Moen, they've been sponsoring us for a long time. Thank you so much to them. Um, if you want to check out the Nebby by Moen Smosh Shower, it starts at just $1.99 for HomeKit Insider listeners. We have a deal for you if you go to home, nebbia.com slash homekit, nebbia.com slash homekit, and use code homekit at checkout, you'll get 10% off all Nebbia products. Nebbia rarely does these types of deals but because they like you guys so much, they've done it just for you. So again, nebbia.com slash homekit, N-E-B-I-A dot com slash homekit to check out what they have to offer and save 10% with code homekit. So check it out. Thank you again to Nebbia for sponsoring this episode. Let's get to some listener questions and follow-ups. So we have been talking about this issue with HomeKit um, and the HomePod playing white noise in the background. I believe it was Simon Salvin that originally sent this in, and we had talked about trying to figure this out where he could set the scene, do all this stuff, and the audio of the white noise would automatically stop roughly like an hour later. And he was having problems with this, and he gave us a little bit of a follow-up where he tried to add everything into this scene and have it run as an automation or on a button press, and it did not seem to want to stop playing the music after a set period of time. So there's been a lot of different workarounds out here. So we had Jonathan Walt on Twitter say that you can use the HomePod to set a sleep timer. So that is one possibility, though it would show as a, a separate command versus your lights and everything else. So I don't think that would combine everything together. Um, but we also had, um, you know, Wes Hilliard here at Apple Insider on the Apple Insider podcast. He says that the HomePod stop in one hour request can be solved using a timer. So change the clock app alarm uh, the tone from radar or whatever to just stop playing and then set up the automation. So airplay to destination, play music, start timer, and then after the timer goes off, just kill whatever is playing. So basically it's tricking it, it it's going to start like a timer, and instead of playing a timer noise that your timer has finished, instead of just going to stop whatever was existing, whatever was going on, and in this case, white noise. So that might be a really good workaround to solve that. So... Yeah, Simon, if, if that's you, if I, have, if I have my notes correct here, try that out. Let us know. I know uh, uh, Wes had mentioned that on Twitter, so check it out. Maybe we'll follow up next week's episode and see if we actually can get the HomePod to stop playing noise after a certain period of time when it's included inside of an automation. We have Miles Buskirk, Buskirk um, who asked us what our recommendation would be for a HomeKit air purifier. Oh, man, I I don't know. I don't know. This is a hard one, and it, it depends on the features that you're looking for as well as the room size that you're looking for and stuff like that. One of my favorite ones has been the Molecule. It's like the Molecule Mini. 
Uh, it's been amazing, has some of the best build quality, and has a different approach to filtering air that I really like. So the Molecule is a really nice option to consider, and they were actually the first, I believe, air purifier to get updated to support HomeKit. There are um, the new, I think it's like the Smart Me P2, if I'm correct, that's actually battery powered. It's the first battery powered HomeKit one, which I think is amazing. So you can just uh, set this up, walk around, uh, and you can move room to room as you need. Great for people who have like, you know, a new baby and want to keep the air clean for their little one around the house. So that's an excellent option to consider. And then there's the new one from, I believe, Airversa, which is like the Purell. This one is unique because it supports Thread. I just reviewed this on a previous episode of HomeKit Insider, so you can dig into that a little bit more. But it's one of the few that actually supports Thread. So that's one of the ones that I'm using right now a lot. I like the solid connectivity on it. Plus the filters are really easy and, and cheap to replace. And it has uh, carbon in the filters. Not all of them have the carbon in there. And I think it additionally helps with like absorbing smells and odors in the air, as well as just scrubbing the air through the filter. So it's got like a kind of a dual stage thing going on there. So those would be my kind of three big recommendations for HomeKit air purifiers. David Donnelly, he said that he just got, um, he sent a picture over of both versions of the Vocolink new uh, stand, the floor lamps. So there's one that has a round base, and then there's another one that's got like a pointed, like a, a right angle, a right angle. And the right angle one is intended to go into the corner of your room, so it keeps things really kind of flush against the wall, and pushes out that ambient light onto the wall. And he does say that, it's still not great in terms of brightness. He likes the design better because the light strip is built into the plastic diffuser and it's meant to be facing the wall, but the brightness is still not amazing. Um, but maybe a little bit more with the rounded base, but still not super bright. So if you want a brighter one, you still have to go through like Philips Hue. We talked about them earlier. That's like the sign floor lights. Those are solid, but yeah, this one seems like a toss up. As long as you know you're not getting a a super bright light, I think these are still a good option to consider. Mike Krabenhoft, again, um, I think he emailed over and he had a question uh, about door locks. So he's looking for a door lock that they his uh, brother and sister or brother-in-law and a sister are looking into for a rental property, an Airbnb. So they want a smart lock on it, which is something that I do see a lot of times when we're staying at Airbnbs using smart locks to allow access to guests to your home, especially remotely. So that's what they're looking for, and they wanted one that would work with HomeKit that would also work with a keypad. What ones are there that are out there? So the two big ones that I would suggest is um, August and Yale. They have a few different options, so there's actual versions of the Yale ones. And August locks also have an optional keypad that you can connect there. You can go through the August app, which is solid, and you can have um, Wi-Fi connectivity on it, not through HomeKit, but it using the August app, which is still really nice for granting that access because like, you can create individual keys for people. So you're already going through that app to, to program the keypads. It makes sense that you could use the Wi-Fi then on the August. That's nice to have. The other one I would suggest is Level. We just talked about their new thread features they're gonna be getting. All versions of Level Lock can work with a keypad. Level has an optional keypad that you can add on there, and it's really handy. So both of those would be my top ones. I know there are others that are out there, some of the integrated keypads, some of the external keypads. I like the external ones because you can kind of place them in different spots. That makes sense, uh, but while keeping your door very clean and looking nice, but I would recommend those two. Then lastly, we have Zishan Shafi, who is a proud home kitty, by the way. Sign in his name, Zishan Home Kitty, with some emojis there. Um, he is asking about, um, or talking rather, about matter and bringing a different perspective to it that we don't have here in the U.S. And that is a constant thing that we hear here on the show, and that is that in the U.K. there's not a ton of home kit accessories. It continues to be a problem. And while in the U.S. it may not be as big of an issue, in the UK, Matter could bring a lot more HomeKit products to the market very quickly. He's been talking about different radiator valves or, or smart thermostats and what his limited options are. And when someone like Google brings Matter support to their Nest line, that's immediately a bunch of new products that are gonna work natively with HomeKit. So I, I'm sure there's gonna be other companies besides uh, Google that this is going to apply to over there, but there's ones that just don't support HomeKit 
add matter support and you've got HomeKit without having to worry about the availability of some of the other widely used products that we talk about here in the US. So I know it's been a struggle over there, but that's a really good point. So if you're in the UK, you're looking for matter stuff, um, this could give you a lot of functionality back into HomeKit when you can't find the accessories that have been on the market for a little while. So that is it. That is our episode of HomeKit Insider. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you to Masterclass and Nebia for sponsoring this episode. You guys know what to do. Check us out at uh, youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. If you want to watch this episode, you can also check us out on Apple Insider. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Like us an Apple podcast. Give us five stars. We'll call you on the next show. Otherwise, stay tuned. I'll be back next week.